Good afternoon. Good morning. How's everyone out there? My name is Scott Britton, and I am a product application specialist for Caterpillar that represents the compact wheel litter line of our product. So I am sitting in my uh, Cat at Home series here. So I am sitting in my home in my spare bedroom slash office now for where I've been for a good amount of time here. So today I'm going to go over with you the 903D of our compact wheel loader line. So it's the smallest of the wheel loaders in the Caterpillar family. And that's what I'm going to cover for you today. So a um, quick reminder that we will um, take questions. Just type them, in the type them in the box there. We'll be able to get to them when we can. And a quick reminder that we'll be covering uh, the next topic, um, not myself, but we'll be covering the CAD Inspect app. So with that said, let's get started. <clears throat> so here we go. So as we go through, Caterpillar, as you all know, offers a large lineup of wheel loaders. So this is kind of a full spectrum of our product. Anywhere down to a 901, sold in other parts of the world. Smallest sold here in North America would be a 903. Largest of our product line being a 994 wheel loader. A little bit bigger than what we're talking about today, but um, we probably have a solution out there for you regardless of your product application, your size, what your, what your job may doing, and so on and so on. So scooting through it, this is just kind of a nice little example. And as you can see, my 903 is proudly set in front of that 994, but that's the product we're going over for you today, just to give you a reference of some kind of size. So let's talk about that guy. What does that mean for us? So our 903, as I kind of like to say, I was an ex-engineer. So as an engineer, we're required to always put charts and presentations or whenever we talk about it. It's, uh, it's kind of jokingly in the bylaws when you leave engineering and go into marketing. So if we have anywhere from our performance to machine to weight ratio, this is kind of where we're at. So with the 903 is on the smaller side of that line, followed up with our 906, 7, and 8. And then relative to the division that I also represent, that goes on up into the 910, the 914, and the coming 920. These are the products that I'm responsible for. So as you're on the lower end of that product line, these tend to be more basic machines. As you can get larger and larger and on up the product line all the way up through that 994, you get more and more features. You're more honed in with what you're doing to a specific job. You get more benefits. You get more production. So generally speaking, as we go up the product line, that's when you step up your hydraulic power, your tipping load, as well as your engine power, your horsepower. So it's more, more power to get it done, more capacity to take care of that. By the same deal, I'm picking up, just as it says, more specs. I'm getting more options to it, and I'm stepping up my productivity. So the lower end of the line tends to be more utility-based. The upper end of the line tends to be more production-based. So let's hone in and talk about that 903. So where would we use this? A lot of folks will tell us when we're at trade shows and doing different things, I didn't even know you had a machine of that size. That looks kind of handy. Or you're looking at the machine thinking, I don't know what I can do with that. So how can I... How can I put that machine to use for me? So some of our most popular applications go into landscape supply yards. So think about how many times is you potentially a customer or you potentially an owner operator are moving about one yard of material at a time. You're putting in the back of your, you know, your friend's favorite half ton pickup truck. You've got a weekend project coming up. Or you as the landscape supply owner, you're loading out your, you know, your dump trucks that you need to go and move 10 yards at a time for a, you know, a new housing community and such going in. So that's where you would put that at a landscape supply yard is a great price for it. So down in our bottom corner, there is snow removal. Snow removal is another critical role that we have in that. So kind of the, about the opposite of a landscape supply yard, but snow removal is great. These are narrow machines. They have excellent visibility out the back. That means that I can see down and over them. I can see where I'm going and I can move the snow that I need to move with them when I'm going through it. General construction. So I can put all kinds of different applications in a so-called general construction. So what does that mean? It's, it's about anything you need it to be. So I can put a broom on it. I can put forks on it. I can put all kinds of tools on it. So let me get to two more. And I, I see, it looks like Andy's asked a question. Let me get two more things and I'll get to that. Landscape installation. So to kind of complement that landscape supply, these are great landscape installation tools. I'm not picking on my very good friends that cover the skid steer product, but a lot of different applications, you can do similar things with them. So the difference in a wheel loader is you're not dragging, you're not kind of, you're turning the machine, meaning that I'm not dragging that wheel. So I'm not disturbing the soil that I just went over when I'm doing type, that type of work. So these are really great in that space. And you'll notice I've also got a power box rake on that. So when I'm preparing that, 
I can put a lot of, uh, I can put the different hydraulic tools on the front of it to help prepare that soil. Then one more that's a very key feature to us is agriculture. Now I know that there's large farms out there that I have personally visited that use much larger wheel loaders to load with. And there's also small farms that are family farms that need only about that size machine to load out with. So agriculture is a very key application for us. So Andy asked here, does the 903 have a quick coupler and is the machine compatible with other machine, other tools, I'm assuming with like a backhoe loader? So yes, these come standard with a quick coupler. As a matter of fact, I'll touch on that, but that's a skid steer style coupler that's on that machine. So yes, I can interface with essentially a host of the skid steer loader style tools. Now, before we go much deeper in that, you got to kind of think, well, how big of a tool can I put in it? It's skid steers hydraulically do have more capacity than this size machine. So you kind of got to have some good sense when you're doing it, when you're using that machine, when you're using that application to kind of make sure that you're matched up right. Um, Bailey asked, what's the lifting capacity of this machine? Well, kind of shown right here, these are all kind of my critical roles that I'm into. So with a bucket, we're going to rate that machine around what we call a rated capacity. That ends up being 2,700 pounds. Now, can I pick up more? Yes, but I don't know what you're doing. I don't know where you're at. So what we call the rated capacity, which is about half of its so-called tip point, that's going to be about 2,700 pounds with a bucket rated. When it comes to fork work, which is the kind of, again, kind of a key application for us when it comes to agriculture, when it comes to landscaping supply, you're going to be in the neighborhood of about 3,800 pounds that you can very safely move material with a set of forks. So it's a comfortable it's a comfortable machine to be in that space with a tight little envelope that it operates in. So let me look at the next thing I have. So let's kind of walk ourselves around this machine. So this is kind of a picture of our machine. So I'm just going to go around some of the key things. Now, right up on the nose of it, you'll see that we have a slew of cat work tool attachments. So there is a host, a quantity, whatever whatever you know, lingo you want to call it. We have a multitude of cat work tools available for this machine. Again, running a skid steer style interface, a skid steel style coupler. So forks, buckets, brooms, um, landscape rakes, um, power box rakes, those type of these would be the type of tools that I would expect to see on that machine. So very simple, very common in the marketplace. You can see them. You can get that in a manual operation. So if you're not changing tools a lot and you don't mind walking to the front and pulling the pins yourself with a kind of little hand handheld thing. Or if you want to run a, a coupler from the cab, you can do that. So currently that machine, a lot of dealers have machines that have electric coupler on them coming out very soon. We'll have a hydraulic coupler on them. What is the nicest thing? One of the better features on this machine would be ride control. So when you're running ride control on that machine, it allows your arms to float as you're going across material. This is a short machine. We won't make any bones about it. So it's not very wide. It's not very long. That being the case, it tends to be, it can be very bumpy. So if you put ride control on that machine, it allows your arms to float kind of like a shock absorber. So that makes it a much, much more comfortable ride. Going through, I also have differential lock as an option on it. So we saw all those applications that snow, general construction, agriculture, that can be really mucky. That can be really muddy. You never know when you might need differential lock. So again, that's a really handy feature to have. Some other key things down on the corner there on the dash, if I'm sitting in the cab that you would see are things like, here we go, creep control. So by creep control, when we get that question, what, Scott, what is creep control? What are you talking about? So if you see the dial in the upper right, what I can do if I'm running a broom, I only want to move so fast, right? I don't want to so-called outrun my broom. So if I want to my machine to go at a slower speed, well, obviously I would just simply use the pedal on the left, my deceleration pedal or my brake. Well, I don't want to ride the brake the whole time. So I can use that dial on the right to turn my machine speed down after using throttle lock, after using my, I can lock my throttle in, I can lock my hydraulic flow in, then I can turn my machine speed down. So I'm not outrunning my tool. It's a very efficient way to operate such a thing. You can do that because it's a high stat operated machine. Throttle lock again being one of the tie-ins right there. It is on that console. You'll see it on the right. So you get your throttle where you want to, get your engine RPMs up, press a button. Your throttle is then locked into space. I'll show you one more and then my work tool control. So on some of those, um, some of those power angle brooms and stuff, maybe I have a water sprinkler I want to turn on and off. Maybe I want to power that broom back and forth. I want to throw material to the left. Or I want to throw material to the right. That's the point of having the work tool control all right there at your fingertips. It's literally just down on your right hand side. 
and it has a multifunction joystick that are available for it. So the joystick is very intuitive to run. If you've never been in a piece of equipment before, this is generally an easy machine to start out operating for that matter in any wheel loader. So it's very similar in a concept to a car. As I'm sitting in the seat, brake is on the left, my throttle is on the right, steering wheel in the center, joystick on the right hand side, down to dump, up to lift, curl and dump. On the joystick that I'm showing there, my forward neutral reverse is on the left, meaning I can go forward and reverse without having to stop and change gears. And then the right-hand side would be my auxiliary controls. That's how I get my broom to rotate a certain way. I get my auger, I get you know whatever tool I may be using. That's how I control it. Not shown, though, also in kind of the fingertip position would be how I activate the diff lock and how I activate um, the continuous flow on that as well. So it just allows me to operate that machine very comfortably from where I'm at. It's just a really simple machine to, to run in that space. So coming to it, I wanna show you just a quick little video. I'm gonna to touch base with it as soon as it loads back up. So just a couple of the applications that we can show. Now, I'm not going to push you through seeing the whole video, and hopefully it's not skipping too bad for you. I know some of these connections can be a little rough, but it's just a video showing multiple different locations, multiple applications of how this machine's run, just to give you an idea of the space and the capacity. So again, landscape supplies, I'm picking up trees, I'm moving sand, I can move bales of hay with it in agriculture, I can use a bale clamp with it. Um, just several different scenarios. I'm very comfortably running a broom if I need to. So there are just multiple, multiple ways that this size machine can be used if needed. And as I sit here and let this play for a little bit, again, don't forget to pop any questions in the bottom if you need to. It's no problem at all. All righty. I will stop that and not make everybody sit through that because I'm going to show you exactly where to find that. So where can I find some of this information? And I'm going to step you through that. So let me fix this real quick. So where can I find some of that information? So you will see information on cat.com. And obviously you can get to any machine when you get to cat.com. And you're going to find specification seats, information, dealer locators, parts. Um, there's a slew of, there's a host of information if you want. There's all kinds of information that you can find when you go to cat.com. Now, if you want more informative videos, if you want to look back at some of the Cat at Home series from some of my uh, coworkers have recorded on different subjects and different types, you can go back to them as well. And you can see that they're all posted on that YouTube channel as well. But I can see application videos. I can see features. I can see dedicated operations of a, a single you know, given operation, how to operate that machine. It's something you're not familiar with. You want to you know, see what the new series includes maybe. You can see that customer stories, actual customers that we go out, that we run machines with, that we validate and test, that we can go and follow up with them and, and get their impressions to how to change it, how to make that machine better. And then, of course, you're on Facebook watching us now. So on Facebook, we have all kinds of stuff that we regularly interact with our customers and we post all kinds of different stuff that you can get to and see. And you'll, a lot of them do link over to our um, YouTube page, but there's a lot of good pictures, and a lot of good stories and good interaction from us when we do that. So let me just show and walk you through that real quick. So if I wanted to look, I've got it kind of preloaded up here for us, but that is our cat.com page just right there. So I can see I've already got it kind of preloaded up for my 903. So I've got good pictures. I've got media offerings. I've got different benefits to it. I can scroll down. I can see all the different applications, how I can configure my machine. There's just a lot of good information that you can find out just from that right there. Once I get there, I can go, if I'm, you're really interested in this particular machine, you can dig in and pull up what we call our spec log, our spec sheets that have all the information. And then that's going to get us over to our YouTube page conveniently where that video just did come from. And we can see I've even so got a host of videos loaded up and that's where I have all kinds of different information available for that. So there is plenty of plenty of plenty of videos for that. We in the uh, we in the wheel loader group like our videos, so we do tend to have a lot of them out there. So you know, please do that. Do check them out if you need it. And of course, where is the number one location to get information? Your Caterpillar dealer. So don't be afraid to reach out to your cat dealer. You know, ask them do they have one in the yard. Is it something you can take a look at? It would you like a demo on one? You know, reach out and see what you can find out of them. So let's see. Emma says, "How much does it weigh, and can I tow it?" Well, conveniently, you can. So uh, this machine comes in right around 9,400 to 9,500 pounds. It depends on how it's configured. So meaning, you know, every city, every state, even sometimes every county has different weight laws in regards to towing, but it's coming in under that 10,000 pound mark. 
meaning that typically you can put that behind your favorite three quarter to one ton truck and haul that on a tag trailer and be very comfortable with that. So you can get that to where you need. So you're typically under that weight threshold. Another very common question we get, because if you'll notice this machine is my picture here is equipped with a complete cab. So that would be a loaded out cab. You know, I can get completely cab and AC and heat that is available in that. For, so for those northern climates, for those snow pushers or for those really hot summer days and, you know, down in the south, the, that cab is great to have. If it's a, something that you would prefer to have an open canopy, that's available as an option, too. So that's not a problem. You can have that on there as well. So those are kind of some of the things that we do tend to get, some of the questions that we do tend to get, but you certainly can do that. These little guys, when you put ride control on them, like I said, they're, they're pretty snappy. You can get up to 12 and a half miles an hour out of that machine. So that's why ride control becomes very comfortable. So you can get from one side of the job to the other pretty comfortably quick. You know, we don't expect long loading hauls out of a machine of this size, but certainly you can do that. So it is something we can definitely get to. So what kind of other questions? Does anybody have anything particular? I'm trying to think of anything that I'd normally like to cover myself. Um, I'll, I'll trigger up one for you. So bucket ranges. Typically, you can put anywhere from about a three-quarter yard to about a one and about a one and about a one and a quarter yard bucket on that machine. Kind of one yard bucket right in the middle is its happy spot. It's kind of right in its sweet spot for most materials if I didn't know any better. Now generally we at CAT always try to look at an application and say, what is my task? What is the tool I need to do that task? And then what is the machine behind that task? What is the primary mover? So most people already know I need a, probably an articulated wheel loader and I need it about this size. So when you're getting that space, that's what we say about a three quarter to one and a quarter yard bucket is typically going to be a very comfortable machine. Again, number one application for these tends to be landscape, landscape supply, landscape installation, snow removal. So a one yard bucket measured out would be about what most people tend to buy and sell materials with. So it's just a really comfortable space to be in. That is about all I had for my piece of it. If there's any other questions that come in, a um, couple of things that I just wanted to go over with you that I was pretty comfortable with that I wanted to go through. So one more topic I do want to touch base with that I'm very excited about. So coming now, hot and fresh, that's coming, you should be able to see this coming around third quarter, fourth quarter, is the new 910, 914, and 920. For my international crowd, that is an EU Stage 5 engine. For my North American folks, that is still a Tier 4 final engine. Now across the board, the three models all did, relative to their previous model, get a performance bump in their horsepower. So the 920, the machine that will be replacing the 918M, gets a full payload bump and a horsepower bump of about 5 and 10%. So it's quite a bit of power that steps up relative to that size machine. It's something that we are very excited for. A lot of the new features on this machine will be more in line with our 926 to 938 class of machine. If that's something that you're more familiar with that you've operated in the past and say, oh, we really like these, can I get a, yes, you can. That's what this product will be bringing to market. We have dedicated packages, so-called dedicated handler packages. So within those handler packages, we will have an aggregate handler package as well as a waste handler package. Very different applications. This machine can do it. It's able to be configured for both. If I need to fully guard a machine up with every imaginable guard that you need to put on it because waste is a very harsh environment, we all know that, I can do that for this machine. If I'm moving stone and can constantly filling up, you know, my hoppers and I need to do that for an aggregate handler, absolutely, I can do that. It'll be configured that way. And then on the bottom right there, you'll notice it says 20% more cutting edge life. How am I doing that? So this machine will have rotary sensors, again, kind of aligned more with um, something that we would see in our larger class of loaders, kind of born out of that. And we borrowed that from our big brother. So it has programmable kickouts with both my lower, my upper and where I want my bucket level position or my fork level position. As I'm coming down to the point that I have pressed and hold and set that configuration for, it will kick out and snub. It will slow itself down. So because of that, I'm able to save a lot of cutting edge life. It's a great feature, time and tested and very well proven on our larger family loaders, and we're happy for it. Um, looks like Andy's asking another question. Looks like you would not need a rear view camera. Andy, I would agree. The visibility to the rear is excellent on this machine. It's probably one of the, I'm, I'm very comfortable with saying it's the best in class within Caterpillar. It's probably one of the best ones. However, you're getting a uh, rear view camera as standard on that machine from the start of that machine. It's coming out every time I'm going to get it. Is rubber tires, um, Shelby asks, is rubber tires all you can get on this model? And no, it's not. 
Um, it's just kind of the way that we have this picture shown, right? I had limited space to talk today. So in the waste handler configuration, you can put solid tires on that machine. You can put solid slick tires on that machine, or you can put solid treaded tires on that machine if your site is you know, a little different, if you have the need for that. There's a host of different size tires that you can put on it, anywhere from a, the 910 models, I can put a 15 and a half. Um, the 920s, I can put a 20 and a half inch tire on it and a 17 and a half in the middle. And I can configure those in your favorite brand if you need to. Um, a lot of times your deals will bring in, kind of know what your local your local sites tend to run. Your deals will have those in stock post most of the time. Give it another little second for any other questions to come in. But that was uh, that was what I wanted to go over with you today was a kind of quick review of the 903 that we've had out for a while and what's coming with our new 910, 914, 920 that I'm just very excited about. Um, should be hitting the ground probably September, October or so for our North American and um, Europe friends that be able to have that model out there. But um, we're really looking forward to this model hitting the ground. So I don't see any more questions popping up. So just a quick reminder that our next subject will be the Cat Inspect app that we'll be covering uh, the next week or so here. And you can tune back into Facebook Live to be able to see you. And I'm Scott Britton. Good to chat with you all today.